Hi, my name is uh, Anwar Hussein, and um, I'd like to welcome you all to uh, Tennessee's first ever conference on the topic of addiction, right? The program is called Trapped, and in some way, shape, or form, we are all trapped in, uh, in our habits, right? So you guys are in for a treat. We have some very special guests that will be speaking about uh, addiction. And um, it will be beneficial for each and every one, inshallah. Um, I'd like to uh, make uh, a couple of uh, announcements as, uh, regarding housekeeping rules. If you have a cell phone, please put it on vibrate or turn them off. We do not want any interruptions while the speakers are giving the lecture, inshallah. So um, if you have a phone, please uh, put it on vibrate, inshallah. Um, and also, if you have any young children who may you know, possibly interrupt or, or, or anything like that, we do have a daycare that is available that you just have to register, inshallah. Um, and it's, uh, it's right next door, inshallah. So today's topic of discussion is addiction. Right? We are all trapped in addiction. The question we must ask ourselves is why? Why and how have we become addicted to the things that our desires yearn for? Inshallah. But without further ado, inshallah, I just wanted to touch bases and give a brief introduction about, about addiction. Um, first, uh, we have speaking uh, today um, is going to be an introduction to addiction by uh, Imam Karim Abu Zaid. He's a very uh, world-renowned speaker from Colorado. And inshallah, if you all would uh, give a warm welcome to uh, Imam Karim Abu Zaid. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina muhammadin fil awwaleen Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina muhammadin fil akhirin Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina Muhammadin fil mala'i al-a'la ila yawm al-deen. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I came flying for three hours from Colorado to be with you. Sheikh Shinnawi and uh, Sheikh uh, Brother Muhammad also from New York. So we need a, a welcome, a warm welcome. And please, if you want to encourage us, you know, to be uh, yani, uh, good guys, that we treat you well, uh, there is no need to club. You know, clubbing is for the sisters in the Salah when the Imam messes up. But when Muslims get excited, what they say, what they do? Takbir. You know, when we say Allahu Akbar, we get a hasana. But takbir is for our respected sisters, inshallah, if the Imam messes up in the salah, to get his attention. Yani. So I'm supposed to excite you, introduce the conference uh, to you, and in introduce the subjects of the conference and the significance of the conference and the importance of the topics and the context of these topics which we will uh, cover. Uh, we understand that we will be addressing addictions, trapped, and that is why the conference is called trapped. Because in a way, addictions, certain things which we do, 
they cannot trap us they control us they fashion uh, our lives to some extent they shape our behaviors and by the way addictions doesn't necessarily necessarily uh, uh, means uh, being addicted to a substance like marijuana or like drugs it can be a behavior a behavior that you, you're used to whether sexual behavior or any other behavior inshallah but let me uh, in the time i have introduce the conference and the context of the topics of this conference to you first of all islam tells us about our body and the fact that in this body there is a limb that is a key to your success a key to your failure that limb is called the heart and i'm talking about the the spiritual heart not the physical heart for example hadith in nu'man ibn bashir radi allahu anhuma wal hadith al bukhari the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says al halal bayyin wal haram bayyin halal is crystal clear haram is crystal clear and then towards the end of the hadith the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says ala inna fil jasad mudgha indeed in your body there is a limb if that limb is sound healthy the rest of the body will be sound and healthy and if that limb is corrupt it will lead to the corruption of the rest of the limbs in your body in fact just to show you the importance of that limb allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look but to your limb but to this limb in your body hadith akhrajah al-imam muslim the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your bodies nor um, at your shapes how handsome good looking you are how beautiful you are but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your hearts and the actions that come as a result of this heart whether wicked or whether right in fact the trials and we believe as muslims that we were brought into this world to be tested this life we have here is a test in fact these tests trials and tribulations are normally presented to the heart تُعْرَضُ الْفِتَنُ عَلَى الْقُلُوبِ كَعَرْضِ الْحَصِيرِ عَوْدًا 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 عُودًا عُودًا The trials, the tests are presented to the hearts. Some hearts end up sucking it, loving it, falling into the traps of it. And some hearts, astaghfirullah, that's haram, kicks it back. So the fitan are presented into the hearts. The Quran and the Sunnah was revealed for that limb. Imagine the revelation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought down the Quran and the Sunnah for that limb to take care of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Surah Al-Shu'ara, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نزل به الروح الأمين على قلبك. This revelations from the Lord of all that exist, the الروح الأمين جبريل عليه السلام revealed it into your heart. وفي سورة قاف إن في ذلك لذكر لمن كان له قلب أو ألقى السمع وهو شهيد. Indeed, in this revelation, there is a reminder. For the one who has a living heart, again, a spiritual heart, we all have medical hearts. We all have that physical heart. But we're talking about the spiritual hearts. For this limb, ya ikhwa, is so important. And subhanallah, 
when this heart is tested, it normally gets sick in two areas. And by the way, I was notified that at the end of each session, at the end of each session, you're going to be asked three questions and there will be prizes. If you're after some prizes, this is an area right there. One of the questions is going to be right here. The type of diseases which contaminate your hearts. The scholars came up with two major areas. Under each brand or category can come subcategories. Shubuhat, memorize those two. If we ask you the questions, what are the type, the two types, there are two types. Yeah. Just to make it easy. You know. Mention the two types of diseases that contact our hearts or contaminate our hearts or corrupt our hearts, whatever verb you want to use here. Type number one, shubuhat. Type number two, shahawat. Shubuhat, shahawat. What do you mean by shubuhat? Misconceptions pertaining to the religion. Not understanding the revelation properly. That you become a murji. That you're someone who doesn't pray. And when you ask you, brother, how come you don't pray? Ya Shaykh, inna Allah rahim. Like we said yesterday. Misconception. Or you become Khariji, extremist. And that's one of the subjects, actually, extremism. That we're going to address because that's a problem that we have. People who look like us, and they go and bomb people like this, just randomly like this, and kill people like this. Uh, and the people who are dying, they are saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and the bomber says, Allahu Akbar. That's a misconception. Misunderstanding of the religion. And, and, and that, by the way, that disease that, 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 that in the area of the knowledge of the religion, that's, and that's how you treat it. That's why knowledge is a key. That's why you're here. You're sacrificing a beautiful Saturday in the city of Nashville, Nashville, the state of Tennessee, to come and sit in front of us. Why? To learn. Because that will remove a lot of misconceptions pertaining to the religion of Islam. And it will help you. And I want to tell you that uh, that type of disease actually emerged at the time of the Prophet وسلم, but it reached the top of the line at the time of the Sahaba. Imagine we had a sect in Islam that assumed that uh, bad things about the religion and they ended up fighting the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet They fought Ali ibn Abi Talib, رضي الله عنه. Ali ibn Abi Talib sent to them Abdullah ibn Abbas. One hour debate, one hour debate. He removed the misconceptions that they had. Third of them, other account says half of them made tawbah and they went back to Ali ibn Abi Talib. We said we're sorry. Misconceptions. The other type which really our focus, if you look at these, drugs, alcohol, pornography, social media. Ah, uh, here you go. Our focus really in this conference in the area of the whims and desires. We call it shahawat. That you love a certain whim, desire, that causes you to develop a pattern of behavior, you become addicted to it. You can't leave it and you're trapped here. You're trapped into this. Now, subhanallah, like I mentioned a minute ago, that the revelation, the Quran and sound sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, initially was meant to immune us, to protect us from, follow, from falling into these traps, whether the area of 
شبهات or the area of شهوات the area of misconceptions misunderstanding the religion or the area of whims and desires so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually revealed to us the Quran and the Sunnah if we understand it properly if we implement it in our lives will protect ourselves against these epidemics against these epidemics but what if you already fallen into it there is no hope who said that there is hope there is cure and that's why we're here and that was mentioned also in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ We reveal from the Quran what can cure, and Allah started with the cure. That means because we're all sinners, we're all weak. A lot of us fall into these traps because of ignorance, not knowing. Not knowing. Not being educated about it. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verse started with the shifa. That the revelation can help you leave these addictions, come out of these traps. Wa rahma, rahma immunity. That if you implement it in the first place, you will not fall into these traps. But what happened? We're human, we're weak, and we ended up what? Going through the fitan and absorbing it and so forth. So remember the question, the two types of diseases that can corrupt our hearts, name them. Here is a, no, that's at the end. They're going to ask you, give you a prize. I don't have anything. All right, that's at the end. Don't rush. طب, here is another question that is going to be also in the test. Which is more difficult? Now I'm asking you, which of the two is more difficult? And more beloved to shaitan? Whims and desires? No. Shubuhat. You want to know why? Because the one who drinks alcohol knows he's wrong. Wallah, if you sing the blues, even if you call it spiritual drinks you still feel guilty about it. The one who smokes marijuana, even if he calls it medical marijuana, he knows it's bad. That's why they keep asking the sheikh, is medical marijuana haram? The sheikh tells them, yes. They keep asking sheikh, she now medical marijuana haram? Yes. They keep another sheikh, yes. He's gonna keep asking. Even if someone tells him, yes, no, it is not haram, you can do it, he's still gonna ask. الْإِثْمُ مَا حَاكَ فِي الصَّدْ Sin is something that aches. It's like subhanAllah, a lot of Muslims in America, they already purchased their houses and they've been living it through mortgage. And they base it in a fatwa of somebody. They still ask, is mortgage halal or haram? They still ask and they're going to keep asking. Even if they get something, they still ask. Because they know. But, but the problem with the misconceptions ولذلك سفيان الثوري one of the predecessors of this ummah scholars of hadith he says البدعه احب الى الشيطان من الكبيره البدعه you being engulfed into uh, exercising innovative act in the religion of islam something that was not revealed is more beloved to satan than a major sin why because the person who does the bid'ah believes that he is right. The person who adopts the wrong methodology, the wrong ideology of Islam, he believes that he is right and he is going to Jannah number one. And he would actually advocate for it. The people who go and bomb Muslims, they believe that they are going to Jannah. That's why he's saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. That's the only problem. But if he sits in a lecture like this and the Sheikh, mashallah, is going to talk about tawbah and talk about coming back to Allah, he may shed a tear. Say, Astaghfirullah, Rabbi, Tawbah, Ya Rabbi. 
He may go to Hajj. So, a shahwa is lesser impact, but it affects us. I'm not saying it's halal, okay? I hope that's not what you're understanding. I'm not saying it's halal. So this conference, brothers and sisters in Islam, you're noticing these titles, only one subject, our focus really is going to be in the area of the whims and desires. Because teaching the knowledge, teaching Tawheed and teaching, that could be another theme, inshallah, for a future conference in order to address, you know, the proper way of understanding uh, the names and the attributes of Allah, understanding the subject of Al-Qadr, because these are the misconceptions that people have about the religion of Islam. But our focus, as you could see, myself and the Mashaykh, there is only one subject which we will cover, insha'Allah, in the area of knowledge, the area of misconceptions, the people who take the extreme, take the far left, and they end up, uh, you know, becoming extremists. Uh, the type of ISIS and these groups that develop every now and then, and we're going to talk about their ideology and how people find themselves into this. The question that uh, you should have here, does the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa talks about someone who is a Muslim, devout Muslim, but yet he is trapped into a sin or two that he can't leave, he can't abandon. Does the sunnah talk about this? Yes. I actually came across a hadith compiled in Mu'jab al-Tabarani, the middle one, Mu'jab al-Awsa. The hadith sahaha of Shaykh al-Albani was authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah. And the narrator is Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhum. Abdullah ibn Abbas says, he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ما من عبد مؤمن إلا وله ذنب يعاوده بين الفينة والفينة. Every believer has a sin. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did not say Muslim. Muslim. And you know, if if you're into Islamic theology, you would know that there is a difference between a Muslim and a Mu'min, even though. Uh, these are alfaz mushtaraka kama qal shaykh al-islam but you know a believer that's a higher level a muslim is one level down based on hadith jibreel ma min abdin mu'min every believer wal wal wa hada naf nakira kama yaqulun an nakira في صيغ النف تفيد المجموع when you negate a noun that doesn't have that definite article you're saying everyone basically تفيد العموم والشمول إلى غير ذلك ما من عبد مؤمن every believing slave but he has a sin that he goes to sin he goes to every now and then. That's addiction, being trapped. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I prepared something to show you the difference between the habit and addictions. That those are two different things, and I will present this at the very end of my presentation. But I want to give this to you the way that Ibn al-Qayyim presented in his literature. We go back to the heart again. Imagine your heart to be a sponge. A sponge. Now, the whims and desires are presented to this heart. When you say, Astaghfirullah, you turn away. The sponge is kept in good shape. When you fall into the sin, you commit it. 
And after you committing it, or after you have committed it, you say, Astaghfirullah. But when you sin, a dark stain placed on this heart. When you say, Astaghfirullah, that dark stain is removed. But what if you do not say Astaghfirullah and you keep sinning? The heart sucks it. Imagine placing an ink pen on a sponge. If you place it and remove it right away, yeah, there will be a dot. You can easily wash it. But if you keep the pink pen on that sponge for a long time, what is going to happen to that ink? will penetrate the heart. It becomes a trait of the heart. Malaka. Difficult. For you to wash that ink, you have to cry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Help me. Take me out of this. It becomes very hard. That's why you're trapped. And it gets to you. You commit it. You say, Astaghfirullah, you go back to it because it's encrypted there. You let it, it became like a lion that you have to fight out. But the hadith is not over yet. Oh, or, ذنبٌ هو مقيم عليه A sin that he cons constantly commits. لا يفارقه حتى الموت. He will not leave it until he dies. But here is the key. فإن المؤمن خلق مفتونا or مفتنا توابا. Why? Because the believer is to face tests and trials. But here it is. That's what makes him still a believer. He repents. When he falls into the sin, he repents, even though he goes back to it, but he repents. Nasa'an, he is forgetful. Sometimes we forget out of weakness. But when we are reminded, we will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هذا المعنى في القرآن يا إخوة في وصف المتقين. That meaning is in the Quran. Talking about the righteous, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ عُدَّةِ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Look at this. Hasten, race one another to Jannah, the whip is the heavens and the earth, prepared for the righteous and the pious. Look at one of the attributes of the righteous and the pious in the verses in Ala Imran. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ those if they commit fahisha, يعني, uh, uh, basically uh, lewdness. Fahisha is adultery or whatever leads to adultery. Or they wrong themselves. They will remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will forgive their sins. فشاهد, إخوة, we're all guilty of this. Don't pretend. Has it been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protecting our honor? Yani, uh, there was uh, one of the scholars, early scholars, Muhammad ibn Wasa, he says, if sins would have a smell, no one would dare sit next to me. Fa, we're all trapped in our own little addictions. Can be one, two, or three. And the way to go about it it's in the area, if it is in the area of knowledge, you teach yourself the proper religion. If it is in the area of whims and desires, taqwa. That you make tawbah and you engage in doing righteousness and piety. They told me five minutes, but there is a, a third question that will be asked. What is the difference between habits and addictions? And I have to tell that this is from online. You see, I did some homework. A habit is something that you choose to do. Addiction, no. Something that you find yourself into. Curiosity. And 
that substance which the brain produces, they call it dopamine. You, you, you know, it gives you that spike in the mood and then you miss it, you go back to it. Until you develop a pattern of uh, behavior that you're actually willing to kill for that substance. And if you are to give it up, there is severe withdrawal. But a habit like drinking coffee in the morning. I mean, we all do. We all do. Drinking coffee in the morning, you know, you could stop drinking coffee. You're going to have a headache the first day, but in two, three days, it will be gone. But smoking marijuana, that's gambling, pornography. No, that's addiction. Addiction. And by the way, addictions, if you engage, indulge in it more, you're going to need more. Different to habits. Habit, you can drink one cup of coffee every day. You can keep doing this until the end of your life. And sometimes you end up drinking decaf and you don't know about it. If you don't know about it, you're going to be okay. But the more you fulfill the needs of your addictions, the more you need, not only that, the quality too has to change. And that's why we say a substance of medical marijuana is difficult. Why? Because it will lead you to opium, to hashish, and then it will lead you to sniffing, heroin, because that will not satisfy you anymore. You need a better, harder, stronger, sharper drug to still provide you with that substance, dopamine, that makes you high. Fa, these are, ya ikhwa, uh, some of the uh, differences between the two they are asking me uh, to stop, inshallah. But they say addiction, dependency upon a particular substance or behavior that you can't live without it. And it's always negative, always negative. Sometimes, subhanallah, uh, it will lead you to uh, losing your lives because of the addiction towards that substance. And we know the people who gone far with drugs, with, you know, uh, sniffing it, they are willing to sacrifice their life for it. فَنَسَأَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ أَنْ يَحْفَظَنَا مِنْ كُلِّ سُوءِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ فَهَذِهِ هِيَ الْأَشْيَاءُ الَّتِي نَحْنُ 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 Okay, what is the difference between habits and addictions? Okay, you, you choose, Imam. Okay. Right. Yeah, we should give him a microphone, so. Yeah. No, no, not looking at the notes. Because I said the questions already. So like addictions are like, you know it's wrong, and the more you do it, the more you have to do it because you feel like you do it. But Can you give me an example? So like, there's this random dude that's like drinking cigars, and then... Like smoking marijuana, will he stay smoking marijuana or will he need more stuff? Does he like, feel like to do it more because right. he's doing it at once. Right. But, but he knows it's wrong. He's going to ask other people he's wrong. But habits is things like you're going to choose to do it. Like video gaming. You're going to play video games until you just going to choose it because you feel good when you play it. All right. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll pass, yes. We'll pass. Mohammed. Okay, the second question, let's choose a sister with your permission, Imam. Inshallah. What is the two types of diseases which contact the hearts? Can you explain يعني, some, just give an idea?
just, you take half of the credit. So sister is, is done? Shubuhad is when misconception and misunderstanding of Islam in Shubuhad Shahawad. Shahawad is when you know it's wrong, but you still keep on doing it. Like what? Um, like say for drinking, for example. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, whims and desires. Uh, yeah. Yes. Jazakallah khaira. Which is more favored to Satan? Shubuhat. Why? Because it's a misconception. And because the person who does it, the person who does the bid'ah, he believes that this is the religion. It's a compound ignorance, not a simple one. Tayyip, the last question, insha'Allah. And by the way, I only hinted to this in my lecture. And those who are focused are going to be, what is the treatment for the first disease and the treatment for the second disease? Two words. I'm looking for two words. The treatment for the first disease? Yes, brother. The first disease, which is misconception in the religion. How do you treat that? Okay, pass. How do you treat misconceptions in the religion? One word. The first word was revealed in the Mus'haf. Knowledge. Maybe. Knowledge. Iqra. Read. But what about the second one? The question is not over yet. The second one. How do you treat whims and desires? What? Withdraw. One word. Magic. 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 Okay, repentance is a component of that. I'm looking for one word I mentioned it. Repentance is correct, brother. I want to tell you. Repentance is correct, but it's a component of, of the word. Tawbah? Tawbah is the same. Tawbah is repentance. Uh, One lot. word that I mentioned in the direction. Taqwa? Taqwa! Here you go, my man. Taqwa. Under Taqwa comes repentance, comes istighfar, comes recitation of the Quran, comes salah comes engaging in righteous deeds, we call this taqa, al-amal bita'atillahi ala noorim min Allah, tawju thawab Allah. Jazakumullah khair. Barakallahu khair. Allahu akbar. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair to Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid for that beautiful introduction into the nature of addiction and how we as Muslims need to approach it. Um, I just want to remind everybody that if you have questions, please write them down on your note cards and then keep them in the note cards. The volunteers will be coming around to collect them so that we have them all ready to go. Um, so please, if you have questions, get them on the note cards. We'll get them collected so that we can get them all to our speakers later on. Um, so coming up to talk is uh, um, Sheikh Mohammed al Shinawi, who is a researcher at the Yaqeen Institute. Um, and he's going to be talking to us about the nature of addiction to technology, which is something.